Okay, so the next thing that we have here is <coughs> a couple of examples. <coughs> okay, so for example, <coughs> let's say that basically the set, we have some set P. <coughs> this is example, this is example number two. Let's say that we have some set P, A, B, and C. And let's say that we have some set Q, which is, which is only, contains only one element R. Yeah, and you want, basically, you want to form the sets P, the Cartesian product of P and Q, P times Q, and also Q times P. And you want to know whether these two sets are equal sets, right? So, by the definition, so by the by the definition of the Cartesian product of the Cartesian product. We can say that P, the Cartesian products of product of P and Q <coughs> of P and Q is basically um, A, basically A is a set containing these elements, A R and basically A B comma B comma R and C comma R. C comma R. And the Cartesian product of Q and P would be basically this set containing R comma A and R comma B and R comma C. And you can see that Basically, p times q is not the, is is not the same thing as q times p. These are not equal sets. <clears throat> but of course, you can see that the number of elements in p times q and q times p is basically the same. Uh, however, basically, n of p times q is the same thing as n of q times p. Now, there is a couple more examples here. Now, let's do this example as well. Um, example number three is A is equal to, for example, one, one, two, and three, and B is equal to three and four. And C is equal to, and C is equal to four, five, and six. So the Cartesian, for example, the Cartesian product of A and B in section C would be equal to basically the Cartesian product of what is B in section C. So B in section C is equal to is equal to a set which is basically only contains four so the, the Cartesian product of A and this set over here would be basically one comma two two comma I'm sorry one comma four two comma four and three comma four 
and that would be a set, right? Now the Cartesian product of, for example, the Cartesian product of A and B, for example, in a section with the Cartesian product of A and C, is basically what is what is A and what is the Cartesian product of A and B? That is equal to this set, which contains one comma three, one comma four. You have two comma three. You have two comma four. You have three comma three. You have three comma four. That is the Cartesian product of A and B. The Cartesian product of A and C. The Cartesian product of A and C is equal to one comma four. One comma four. One comma five. One comma six. We have two comma three, two comma four, two comma five. We have two comma four, two comma, two comma five, two comma six, two comma five, two comma six, and you have three comma four, three comma five, and three comma six. Now, what is the intersection of these two sets? A, A, basically the Cartesian product of B intersection with the Cartesian product of A and C. So the intersection of these two sets is, of course, one comma three is not there. One comma four is there, common between the two sets. Two comma three is not common. Two comma four is common. And three comma three is not common, three comma four is common. And that's basically how you can calculate this. Now there is not much to tell here. And um, let me go through some exercises as well to see if there is something interesting in the exercises and then we will get to relations. So, <clears throat> so for example, ex exercise, this is exercise, this is exercise 2.1, this is exercise 2.1, so number 2 is asking if set A has 3 elements, meaning that N of A is equal to 3. And if set B has, uh, and set B is equal to basically 3, 4, and 5. Find the number of the elements in A times B. The number of the elements in A times B. So, so based on this, you can say that N of B is equal to 3. You have 3 elements here. So if I call this P, and if I call this Q, then N, N of A times B is equal to P times Q, which is equal to basically 3 times 3, which is equal to 9, right? That is, that, that was one example. Now there is question number, there is question number three, uh, I'm sorry, there is question number four, which is also kind of interesting. It says that state whether each of the following statements is true or false, and if the statement is false, rewrite the given statement correctly. So the statement is number one, if, if P is equal to basically, if P is equal to M comma N, and Q is equal to N comma M, N comma M comma N, N comma M, I'm sorry, M comma N, then P 
times Q is equal to M comma N comma N comma M. Right? So how do you calculate P times Q here if P is this set and Q is this set? M comma N and so basically then P, the Cartesian product of P and Q is going to be equal to this set. M comma N and M comma M and then you have N comma N and then you have N comma M, right? So M comma N and uh, So, but and you need to take you need to make sure that basically you're not you're not writing repeated pro, repeated basically results here, meaning that m comma n and then this is not repeated m comma m is not repeated m n comma n is not repeated n comma m comma n is not repeated. So that means that the right way of writing P times the Cartesian product of P and Q is basically this thing over here. Now, as you can see, this is an if then statement, meaning that if this statement is supposed to be true, then if P is true, meaning that, of course, I'm assuming that P is true, then Q has to be true, right? But of course, Q is not true. Meaning that if I take this as, if I take this statement as P, and if I take this statement as Q, if I assume that P is true, then Q is not true, right? Because, because the right way of writing P, the Cartesian product of P and Q is this way, and not this way. So Q is not true. That means that this statement, this whole statement is not true. And so the right way of, the correct way of writing this statement would be if P is equal to, if P is this set equal to basically M comma N and Q is equal to N comma M, then, then P times Q Then P times Q is equal to this set over here, M comma N, M comma M, N comma N, and N comma M. That is the correct way of writing this statement. And now this statement, and now the statement is, and now the statement is true. Right, so let me take a look at my answer here. <clears throat> okay, so for example, there is, we have another statement here that says that if A and B are non-empty sets, then the Cartesian product of A and B is a non-empty set of order pairs X and Y such that X belongs to A and Y belongs to B. That statement is true based on the definition that we have. And so we so just the statement is simply true. Statement number three is if A is equal to the set containing one and two and B is a set containing three and four, then A, the Cartesian product of these sets is equal to, for example, the null set. So so for example, if you have A is equal to 1 comma 2 and then b is equal to 3 comma 4 then <clears throat> so if that is the case then uh, basically then the cartesian product of this of these two sets b intersection with the null set is equal to the null set so we need to examine that so I'm assuming that this is true. And so if that is true, this has to be necessarily true. Meaning that what is the, what is the intersection of any set with the null set? Okay. So I did actually make a mistake here. Uh, 
So basically, uh, what this statement is saying is that, well, we said that if this is true, then this has to be true, and then the whole statement is true, right? Now, what is the intersection of any set with the null set? So if I'm assuming that this is true, and I want to see if this, this statement here is true or not. So the intersection of any set with the null set is the null set, because the null set has nothing in common with any set, right? So that means that I can write this as the intersection, uh, as the Cartesian product of the Cartesian product of A with the null set. The Cartesian product of any set with the null set is actually equal to the null set because the null set has no elements, which is true, right? So, so basically P is true and Q is also true, which means that the whole statement is true, right? Now, we have another uh, we have another question over here which is also interesting. Question number six it's asking basically if if the Cartesian product of if the Cartesian product of a and b is this set which is a comma x and a comma y and b comma x and b comma y right you want to find you want to find a and b Now, you know that the Cartesian product of two sets, when, when you're, when you're calculating the Cartesian product of A and B, these first elements of the ordered pairs, they have to come from A. That means that your A must have been basically A, and over here A is repeated, and B over, and B as well. And B is repeated here. And also B must have been all of these second elements, X and Y, X and Y. So X and Y. Now if I calculate the Cartesian product of these two sets, what I will get is A comma X, A comma Y. We have B comma X and B comma Y. And that is the exact set that we have over here. And that then basically there you have your the sets A and B. Now there is there is another there is another question over here which is also interesting question number eight, which is Basically, let A be equal to basically the set 1, 2. And let's, let B be the set 3, 4. And you want to write, first of all, the Cartesian product of A and B. And you want to know how many subsets will that have. How many subsets does the set, the Cartesian product of A and B have? Okay, so, so basically you know that I, I don't want to write out exactly or I, I, I could actually do that. So the Cartesian product of A and B would be 1 comma 3, would be 1 comma 4, would be 2 comma 3, would be two comma four, right? So I have two mem to four basically four elements in here, meaning that n of a times b is equal to four. Now, basically in the in the in the sets, basically in the in the in the in the course that we did on sets, we said that if 
if I have a set A and if N of A is equal to P, then N of P of A, N of P of A is equal to basically 2 raised to the power, 2 raised to the power P. Meaning that, meaning that if you have some set, for example, that some set that has three elements, for example, let's say A has basically one, two, and three, three elements here. Then all the subsets of A would be, for example, this set that contains a one, this set that contains a two, this set that contains a three, this set that contains a one comma two, this set that contains a one comma three, this set that contains a two comma three, and this set that contains nothing. The null set. And also the set itself. One comma two comma three. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight sets that are all subsets of this set. Now if I put all of these sets in a set, meaning that if I write all of these and as a set and that would be basically called P of A, which is called the power set of A, right? So I can write the, the, the number of the elements of the power set of A is equal to 8, which is equal to 2 raised to the power 3, which is equal to 2 raised to the power if I take basically n of a is equal to p, that's 2 raised to the power p, which is what I have written over here, right? So, so what that means is that, and so, and so basically you can use the same formula, although it's, 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 it's meant to be the number of the elements of the power set of a set. But the, 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 the power set of a set does contain, after all, only the subsets of of the of, of any set that you meet, you might be working with which means that which means that you can say that basically the number of the number of the elements the number of the subsets of any set of any set is equal to 2 raised to the power p where p is is basically p is where p is the number of the number of the elements of the set of the set right so i can use now the same formula here and um I have basically the question that we wanted to answer was uh, basically A was this set over here. So this was the question that we wanted to solve. So this was basically we said that A is this set here, B is this set here. And how many subsets does A, the, the Cartesian product of A and B have? So you can see that N of A times B is equal to 4. That means that that means that the number of subsets, <coughs> excuse me, that means that the number of subsets that means that the number of the number of subsets of of a times b or the Cartesian product of a and b is 2 raised to the power basically n of a times b right which is equal to 2 raised to the power 4 which is equal to 16. so that's basically uh that and then you can list them meaning that uh, you can of course if you want to list the the, the subsets of a times b you have to find some sort of strategy that gets you to all of those subsets. I leave that to you to, to figure that out. You have to find different, I mean, you have to, to, to try different algorithms and one of them will work for you. For example, you can say that I'm going to take this one with, with this one and then this one with this one and then this one with this one. 
and then you can start with this one then take this one with this one take this one with this one take this one with this one and then um, and um, But although the algorithm I have actually, I used to know the algorithm because I f used to, I, I did find it on my own. But right, right now, I don't actually, do, I do not actually know the algorithm right now. Um, it would be interesting for you to find the algorithm on your own. If you, if you, if you happen to find, to find the algorithm, please, please share it with everybody in the course message board so that uh, so that everybody can use it i did find this algorithm at uh, 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 some some time ago i don't remember it right now but if you come up with a way to can to to figure out all the all the possible subsets of this set please share it with everybody in the course message board it's you need to find different, you need to find, to, to basically try different algorithms in order to figure out what is, what is, what is the, what is some algorithm that works in, in this particular case, right? But the number of those sets is going to be 16. And remember that basically the number of subsets of any set, so you have basically among all the subsets that you would find, for example, if, if you have some, some set A, 1, 2, and 3, so then you can, you can form, you can form all of these subsets as 1 and 2 and, and for example, 3 and for example, um, 2, 1 and 2 and, and so on and so forth. But among all of those subsets, there is the set itself, meaning that 1, 2, and 3 is also a subset of this set. And meaning that always that is, that, that is actually the case. And also there is the null set. The null set is also the subset of any set. So these two are always there. And then you need to find all of the, all of the different combinations of these, um, of these, um, of these elements here, all the different possible combinations and not permutations, all only combinations. You will, you will figure out some way to, you can actually figure out some way to do that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> question number nine is let A and B be two sets such that N of A is equal to three, N of B is equal to two. Um, okay, so this is also not a bad example. So for example, let, let A and B be two sets such that N of A is equal to, N of A is equal to 3 and N of B is equal to 2. And if, if basically X comma 1 and x and y comma 2 and z comma 1 are among the elements are members of members of basically the cartesian product of a and b find a and b where where x, y, and z are distinct elements. Distinct elements. Okay, so in order to figure that out, you know that there are three elements in A. There are two elements in B, right? So that I know. And, and of course, since I'm calculating the, 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 the Cartesian product of A and B, and these elements happen to be in members of this set, that means that these first elements are basically elements of A. That means that I can write A is equal to X, Y, and Z, and B is equal to basically 1 and 2. And... Uh,
and that's basically that's basically your sets so there is and x y and z are distinct elements here right so question number nine is uh, Let me take a look at the solution. Yeah. Well, yes, that that basically the answers are these. These are exactly correct, right? And question number ten is the Cartesian product a times a has nine elements, among which are found negative one and so on. So. Okay, so we said uh, basically question number ten is the Cartesian product a times a has nine elements meaning that n of a times a is equal to nine uh, and basically negative one comma zero and and uh, belongs to basically a times a and also uh, zero comma one belongs to a comma a times a these are members of this set so you want to find the set A and the remaining elements of A times A. You want to find the set A and the remaining elements of remaining elements of A times A. So so first of all, I know that basically a times since a times a is equal to nine. Well, basically nine can can be written as nine can be written as either three times three, or nine can be written as one times nine, right? So so what that means is that basically we said that we said that if the Cartesian product of two sets has well so many elements that means that basically the sets of course this, these are the cartesian product of the of the exact two of the exact same sets meaning that i cannot take one and nine because i cannot assume that set a first had one element and that and then had nine element and then the 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 product of them became a nine. That's that's just simply not possible. I'm saying this based on the fact that we said that if if n of a, for example, is equal to p, and if n of b is equal to q, then n of a times b is going to be equal to p times q. Meaning that if there is a if there is a set which is a Cartesian product of two sets a and b then the number of elements in that set is going to be equal to the product of the number of elements in, in the first set and the second set, right? So now since over here I'm talking about the exact same two sets, that means that, well, the number of elements of that set is constant. It's going to be either 2 or 3 or 4 or 4 or whatever, but it cannot change. Meaning that this number 9 can be only 3 times 3. That means that I can say that n of a is equal to 3. a has 3 elements. Now, the next thing that I can, that I can figure out here is that, well, of course, um, of course, basically, um, since I'm, I'm working with two sets, then the first element comes from the first set, which is, which is set A. The second element comes from the second set, which is again the set A again. The first element comes from this first set, which is set A. Second element comes from the second set, which is again the same set. That means that all of these elements come from the first set. Meaning that I can write A is equal to negative 1, 0, and positive one right and so this is basically this is basically your set a this is your set a and as you can see it has exactly three elements now 
if I have the, the set A, if I write it one more time over here for the sake of simplicity and convenience, then you can see that the Cartesian product of A and A is going to be equal to negative 1 times negative 1 comma negative 1, negative 1 comma 0, and negative 1 comma 1, and then we have 0 comma negative 1, 0 comma 0 comma 0 and 0 comma 1 and then you have 1 comma negative 1 and 1 comma 0 and 1 comma 0 and 1 comma 1 and that's the Cartesian product of the of the of the two sets and the elements that we had over here were negative 1 comma 0 and 0 comma 1 and these are the remaining elements that we were looking for right so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 now this was a little bit of well definitions and theory and practice related to the cartesian product of the two sets of two sets in the next video, we will explore relations and uh, so I'll see you in the next video and thank you.